Once we've actually done some release work on the tibialis anterior, we still need to do strength-based work on it. Remember, we can't just release. So you're going to put one foot slightly forward there, Josh. And what I'm going to do, I'm just getting one of those cuff weights. I'm sure you can get something fancy if you want. And just from there, Josh, see if you can lift your toes up. Yeah, good. How's that feel? And down. Now, all you're doing is getting the person to practice working into dorsiflexion. Up and down. Remember, dorsiflexion is very, very important. Now, this is a great exercise, not just for someone like Josh with high arch feet. It is also an excellent exercise for drop foot. When we talk about gait, you'll understand a little bit more about drop foot, but I want you to remember that drop foot is a significant neurological condition that is a side effect of diseases like multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, or trauma to the brain from things like stroke, or it can be as a result of an injury to your spinal cord. We can also get drop foot just from aging because we've lost dorsiflexion in our feet. Now, the problem being with someone with drop foot is they can't dorsiflex. And therefore, when they're walking, they, instead of doing that nice step front, heel down, toe down, they shuffle. You can see it. And when they shuffle, you end up tripping and falls. And we really don't want people to fall. Doing some strength work is really important. How is that on your foot? Nice. It does feel kind of easy, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah but again, we can add a few little tricks into that. What we also want to do when we work with someone with tibialis anterior problems is help encourage their slide of their talus. Mainly the slide's going to be stuck on the lateral side. Talus glide is important for people with flat feet as well. So this exercise is perfect for both. It's just your focus is slightly different, okay? So what we're going to do is, dot Josh, you're going to put one foot there. So he's in dorsiflexion. On his back foot, he is in plantar flexion or toe off stage of gait. And what he's going to do is bend the front knee and just allow the talus to glide. Ooh, how's that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, straighten the back the front leg and bend the back leg. Good. Forward and back. Now, for some people, you might put that your hand in there. I prefer not to do too much sort of manipulation like that because it means that your client can't reproduce this at home. And this is the sort of exercise that somebody needs to be doing every day to get the results. So Josh, what I'm going to do is slip this band. You're going to put that over there. I love these bands. It makes me feel like my underwear is dropped, okay? <laughs> you know, like the, the undies, and, sorry. Um, just out. stepping off, yeah. There. Same foot position? Yes, yeah, same foot position. So really what we're going to do is put that there on the talus to help make it glide as he bends the knee forward. Yeah, good. How's that feel? Mm -hmm. And can you see where we do that, that he is already getting just that little bit more movement at the knee, so the knee's coming further over his toes. Also remember that if somebody's doing this exercise, their knee has to track over their toe. So if they're not, you might want to get a broomstick and have that broomstick along the leg here so that it stops them from rolling the knee in. It can also give them a little bit of support there for balance work if they're a bit nervous on balance.